Hi, my name is Rupesh Arkaryat and I'm a PhD student at Penn State and uh, today I'm going to talk about my poster on effects of inbreeding and herbivory on fitness across generation in horse nettle. Uh, on this poster I have some other authors. Uh, the second one is Sarah Scanlon who is an undergraduate student in our lab and Marcy Mesher is my uh, co-advisor and Consuelo de Moraes is uh, one of my committee members and uh, Andrew, G Andrew G. Stephenson is my dissertation advisor. Uh, to start with the uh, poster, uh, we all know that the selfed progenies uh, suffer from inbreeding depression with a reduction in fitness and inbreeding depression has also been found to vary among maternal families within a population. But uh, relatively very little is known about how the interaction of inbreeding goes on with herbivory and also the effects of inbreeding over generations in a field. Uh, to understand more about this, uh, we came up with some objectives where we want to specifically look at how inbred and outbred progenies from different maternal families differ in fitness, new offspring production and also susceptibility to herbivory under natural field conditions over multiple years. Uh, to address these objectives, we are using uh, common horse nettle as our study system. Common horse nettle is a herbaceous perennial. It inhabits uh, wasteland and crop fields. It is also described as an invasive noxious weed. And the good thing is it is a close relative of Solanum lycopersicum tomato, which, uh, which is very good because we can use uh, the wide range of genetic tools and other things that are available for tomato. And uh, so it becomes an excellent model system to understand or to ask these questions. Specifically, our hypothesis include the first one is um, uh, the outbred plants will produce higher number of fruits and more seeds per fruit and will also have higher fitness than the inbreds in a single generation after the first year of growth. Uh, to go to the multiple generation objective, uh, our second hypothesis is that the inbreeding depression in horse nettle extends to second generation of growth uh, and colonization uh, by producing smaller number of sh offshoots. Uh, the offshoots are the rhizomatous uh, re-sprouts from the parent plants and also a lower number of fruits and uh, uh, less fit progenies from the inbreds. Uh, uh, for these objectives, uh, I used eight maternal families and one inbred and one outbred progeny from each of them and uh, this was done in two fields and um, after an year of the colonization, what happens is the new sprouts come up and they get all mixed together. So if we want to know the fitness and if we want to get the fruit and seed data, we need to make sure that we know the new sprouts are from which parent or uh, which parent. So in order to know that, um, the, all the plants that I used were different genotypes or genetically dissimilar. Um, and for that I used a different S allele combination and the S allele is self-incompatibility locus polymorphic variants. So by this, if, I, if you look at the field layout, uh, I planted these plants in a circle, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and each of these plants carry a different combination of S alleles. By this, uh, in the second year, when these plants all produce new sprouts, I can distinguish by PCRing, um, I can distinguish uh, whether the sprouts are from this one or this one, because the new sprouts will be all, you know, like mixed all over. And uh, here are my results. Uh, the first um, uh, set of results is from the first year and as expected we found that the inbred progenies, uh, the inbred plants from all these maternal families uh, produce lower number of fruits whereas the outbred produce significantly higher number of fruits and also they were uh, less fit than the outbreds. And also uh, I, have, I don't have the graph here but they produce lesser number of seeds per fruit also. And, uh, during the second year, which is uh, one year after um, these plants were put in the field, what happens is that um, after the first year of growth, uh, the above ground parts, uh, they just die and the, the, the below ground parts overwinter. So in the uh, late spring of uh, the second year, when I went there and I found that there were so many uh, sprouts uh, which were seen, um, you know, somewhat close to the parent plants. Uh, so I looked at uh, whether these sprouts are from the inbreds or outbreds and what is the variation between the inbreds and outbreds. So what I found that um, the outbreds produced more sprouts and also these sprouts came up earlier in the generation. So basically they got a jump start. And uh, later in the generation, these are the eight maternal families and the inbreds also started to uh, produce sprouts. And 
all these families produced both uh, inbred and outbred sprouts. And when I looked at the uh, total number of sprouts produced, I found that the inbreds produced lower number of sprouts than the outbreds. Uh, I said that I had two fields, uh, so we wanted to see if herbivory has an effect on inbreeding depression. And so what we did was, uh, among uh, on one field we sprayed uh, using a contact herbicide, uh, contact insecticide, four times during the uh, season. And uh, don't have the graph here, but what we found that. Um, Definitely, um, uh, herbivory has an effect on inbreeding, and uh, the plants, the field which was which was sprayed with the insecticide, produced higher amount of fruits and seed, uh, fruits and seeds. And what one interesting thing is, uh, we found that the outbreds are more affected by uh, herbivory. So when the uh, the field was sprayed with the insecticide, uh, we found that the outbred plants uh, performed better than the inbreds, or uh, the herbivory had an effect. Um, uh, a broader effect on uh, outbreds and the inbreds. And then I did the PCR to, in order to get this data, I had to do the PCR so that I can say these sprouts are from these parents and not from the other one. So I did the PCR and then I amplified the alleles and then I genotyped them. To conclude, uh, what we find is uh, horse nettle suffers from severe inbreeding depression in the field and sprouts from outbred plants in the second year they get a jump start uh, than the inbreds. The outbred plants produce more sprouts uh, than the inbreds and herbivory effect fruit and seed production. And I would like to thank uh, Botany Society for giving me this opportunity to do this poster. Thank you.